Warning, the following contains semi-educational information and in no way expresses the views of National Weather Service or its employees. Today we're going to talk a little bit more in detail with uh, these weather signs. I know we've already uh, had at least one episode on uh, K0BJJ Amateur Radio about this, but this video is going to both Amateur Radio and Storm Chasing. So, if you are a fan of Amateur Radio, and you are watching this on the Storm Chasing channel, there will be a link for that below. And if you are a fan of Storm Chasing and you're seeing this on Amateur Radio, there will be a link for the other channel below. That being said, I want to apologize for the shoddy camera coverage. We're still working with some equipment issues. But my sand collection back here, right there, grew two more, grew two larger over the past 24 hours the goal of these weather signs is to give national weather service wind information to help them with their forecast models and they don't go out and retrieve these things so they're kind of free game for a anyone to go out and get and there's a couple different ways that you can go about getting them so I'm going to show you the technique and the tools that I use when recovering a weather sign. Plus I will show you a little bit of footage from a recovery on the 31st of March. So that being said, let me show you my tool. So the first major tool I use, and I know we have a different camera angle, and I know there's different audio quality. I don't have the lapel mic on. I, I went from my handheld camera to my desk camera so different view and everything but I wanted to show you this this is called Sand Hub or Sandy Hub and at the time that I'm recording this part of the video it's 6:22 a.m. which means we are a currently tracking a sand out of Omaha which is where the sands that affect me generally come from so this sand is going to Looks like it's gonna go down near highway, just south of Highway 6 on this predicted path, right in Pottawatomie County. Now, the cool thing about this is you can click the launch site and generate predictions. And first of all, I wanna say this, you do not need to be a ham operator to do any of this. This is a receive only activity if you start diving deep into it. But just from the predictions, it looks like generally the next few predictions, the next few um, signs, at least up to what, 13, 14, are going to generally be about landing roughly between Des Moines and Omaha. Now, those are predictions. You very rarely get a prediction that brings a sand over to Newton. What happens is it catches a low or mid-level jet or even an upper-level jet stream and it blows it over the, the, big, the city of Des Moines. You can also look at the flight path. As you can see, there's a note here. It was recovered by me. Balloon located three-fourths of a mile west of the position in the field. This was at night. And this one was recovered balloon located approximately 350 yards south uh, of the road in the field. So you can generate historical paths. But this is the main tracking of how I actually, well, let's see if the path will actually generate. There we go. The main tracking of the balloon. And you can do this all on sand hub. These little green dots are receiving stations. So they are receiving the signal from the sand and putting it out over the internet for this. So my closest receiving stations in Altoona, wonderful man. He just actually got his station up. So with the sand, as you can tell, it looped back over, caught the low level jet. That's where it was predicted to have fallen. That's where I was sitting when we recovered it. It was actually probably about right here. We have this sand right here. These are both the March 31st sands. We didn't get on this near quick enough. So we were, we were on this one probably within 10 minutes of it landing. I should have took off a little quicker, but flight path, 
hung out around I-80, came south, and then flipped around, ended up landing right there, we ended up parking right there, and actually the video footage you're going to see of the recovery is this sand right here. So I'm going to bring you back to the main camera, and I'm going to show you another little thing, but if you have nothing else at all other than your phone with internet, Sound Hub, I will link it in the description below, is all you need for a good start. It will give you a great idea of where it is. This one was fairly accurate. I want to say the sound was recovered within probably 100 yards of where that GPS was. So this was actually a very good test. So the next thing you can do if you really want to dip down this rabbit hole is get what's called a LoRa device. Now this little device, and this is a 3D printed case I got on a ham fest, it's zip tied because I had the batteries on. I did have a case that encased the batteries, but then I couldn't get to the switches real well. So um, I did a little modification to this, have a lanyard. So I can literally clip this on me if I'm wearing a reflective vest or if I have a backpack on, it just can clip up. But what this little device does is it takes the signal from the sand and if I went, actually get in trouble, I turn one on and show you. Um, but I technically can't transmit on those bands because they're not amateur radio. But it takes the signal from that sun and gives you its GPS location. Which, with that, along with a tablet or a cell phone with my sound Go on it, and I'll link as much of this in the description as I can as possible, you can actually walk it'll give you its location until you're standing on top of it so with the hunts that we've been doing lately or with the recoveries we've been doing lately i kind of call them hunts what we're doing is we're using my the sound hub to get an idea how close it is gauge when we want to go out and then we're switching to the lora device with my sound go and we're getting the signal in and we're using the tablet with the Lord device to take us to the device or gauge where we want to go. The almighty shot that we really want to get is the sun coming overhead or right at us and catching it out of thin air. That's the shot everyone wants. It's extremely rare, but you know, when you get close, it's, it's a reward that we had the sun on Sunday night, go over our heads. We didn't see it, but just looking at the track, it flew right over us. So, if you really want to get down the rabbit hole, get a Laura device, get my son go. Another thing you can do is direction find. And there's a wonderful video or presentation on my um, amateur radio channel. And I will link this down below. K0GR Clint did at the Warren County Ham Fest where he talks about fox hunting or direction finding. You can direction find or DF these things too. They're running... I think a half a watt of power. You get a directional antenna, you get your direction finding equipment, which by the way, receive only, you don't need a ham license for it. So you can do this willy nilly without a ham license. And you can use those skills and those techniques to take you to the signs also once they're on the ground. Now given, these are only gonna transmit for approximately 12 hours because they want them to shut off before they release the next one and they release them 12 hours apart. So the first one's gonna go off before the second one goes in the air. So you have kind of a limited window where they're transmitting to where you can lead up to it. With that, I wanna show you the, foot, the chase footage. I'm sorry it's not that good. A little filming getting a little too excited. We don't get many signs in our area. So I'm gonna take you to the footage and I'll be back with you here shortly. We've got the balloon recovered. So I just want to say a special thank you to W0YR Paul and K0GR Clint, both of the Story County Amateur Radio uh, Club. Yeah, start remembering their initials because they are the ones that got me hooked down doing these weather signs and hunting these weather balloons. 
It is a fun activity. You can do it with the whole family. Trust me, I've had both the boys with me on it on Saturday. My oldest is my go-to chase partner. So you can do this with the whole family and it's just literally a, it's a treasure hunt that falls out of the air from National Weather Service. So thank you, National Weather Service. Your instrumentation and your data is creating family-friendly activities to do for us. So with that, I wanna thank these people that have supported the channel. They're coming up after me. With everyone else, we'll see you on the next video.